Hey, welcome to Tuesday Trash Talk at 10. My name is Cheryl Baldwin and I'm with the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. And I also run the What's In What's Out program for the Recycle CT Foundation. Today we're going to experiment. We're going to see can we really grow vegetables from food scraps? So you might ask, how is this related to trash talks? Well, uh, I must admit, uh, it's a little bit out of my uh, zone, if you will. While I do garden, I've actually never done this. Um, so it really is an experiment for me. And I'm excited to uh, come back in a couple of weeks and share with you whether or not it worked. So uh, before that, just a reminder that uh, I do different topics around trash. And if you have a topic you want me to cover, by all means, put it in the comment section and I'll get to it in the future. So today, um, when we think of, of food scraps, often people think that they have no value, right? You just put them right in the trash. While I compost at home, I would put them in the compost. But today we're going to see if there's a higher use for those food scraps in trying to grow more food. So I've seen articles, I'm sure you have as well, and there's a lot of YouTube videos out there, which is great. And so um, the first thing I found was actually 10 things you can grow in water. And it ranged anywhere from bok choy to cabbage to celery, fennel, and carrot greens, as well as green onions. So green onions and leeks, they already come with roots. I thought, that's too easy. And sprouts, you can sprout things. So you have beans and legumes. You not only can plant them as a seed, and they will uh, emerge and create a plant, but you can actually sprout them into food automatically. Other seeds would be um, like potatoes uh, that have eyes or when they start growing roots, that is considered the seed and you would plant. But I was trying to think of other things um, that are perhaps not so traditional. So I have both the ends of a celery and ends of a lettuce head. And um, yesterday I started thinking about this and I found another article that talked about 25 things you could grow. And it included a pineapple. And I had just cut a pineapple the other day, so I literally picked it out of the compost. So it's an experiment. You know, this is how science works. You try things, and if they work, great. And if not, you could try them again. So um, I'm going to start with celery. They usually say that you want two to three inches in height. Um, again, mine is not uniform. I didn't buy uh, celery and then cut it for this project. This is literally what I would have thrown in the compost and I chose not to. They do say to cut the end off and the reason for that I'm assuming is because that's where the roots form and you want a, a new surface, uh, which makes sense, and that we should expect new growth coming out of the center. Sounds good. So far so good. Pretty easy. You put water on the bottom, apparently just enough to make it wet see if that's enough and then it's supposed to uh, I'm supposed to change the water every two to three days which I will do and then a couple of weeks I'm supposed to find that there's growth I did watch a YouTube video about celery from a woman in California who it's a it's actually a perennial plant so uh, that won't be our case in the Northeast but apparently once it gets going you can actually put it in a pot so I'm really excited about the idea of celery. I love celery, so I'm really excited to see how this works. We'll see. So next is lettuce. Lettuce is very similar. You want one to three inches. And again, I, don't, I didn't have a head of lettuce that I then neatly chopped off. You can see, you know, as I pull the leaves off, it was romaine. I pull leaves off as I eat it, and then I'm just left with this stump. So we'll see. Will it work? Again, they want you to cut the uh, bottom off so that you can have a clean surface. And I'll get a glass for this one. Same idea, the growth should come from the center. Whether or not I've allowed enough space for growth, I don't know because again, I just kind of ripped off the leaves and I don't know if there's anything there. But we'll see. Again, clean water every two to three days and then a couple of weeks I should have, well, we'll see whether or not I get a plant. So pineapples, uh, again, I did not prepare the pineapple in the correct way because when I 
eating a pineapple, I don't know how you do it, I just chop off the top. And apparently to grow a pineapple, you want to take your pineapple and twist it off because you're left with um, apparently more of a crown. I don't know, again, if this will work, but I'm going to try. And um, you're also supposed to pull off all, a bunch of leaves so that a lot of this area has access to water. So I'm going to do that. So I actually uh, am curious about this pineapple bit, and I thought I wanted to try it, one, because I knew I just uh, had a pineapple that I cut open, but I also uh, was wondering whether or not it was going to be a lot like an avocado seed, right? Many of you might have tried an avocado seed where you put the toothpicks in and then you put it over the water and then you get a plant, but you never get an avocado. You just get a plant. And so I imagine that it's going to be the same for this. But to try to understand whether or not that's actually going to happen, I wanted to remind myself about the growth of pineapples. I was lucky enough to actually visit a pineapple farm a number of years ago, and I remembered two things from that experience. Um, one, the plants are really big. It's like the, these kind of leaves, but they're really big, and they take a lot of space, and you literally have a shoot and then the pineapple, and you get one pineapple per plant. So that's the first thing I remember. The other thing that I remembered is that um, it takes a long time to get a pineapple, and I couldn't remember the details of it, but I looked it up, and um, what was interesting is you cannot grow pineapple from seed. In fact, the way that you do it is you actually rip off the top, and I doubt they put it in a little jar or a little glass, but um, they do rip off the top and that is how they propagate new um, pineapples. So that was kind of interesting. So I'm like, oh, maybe we will get a pineapple. And then I want to understand how long, how long will it take me to get a pineapple? There's a video that talks about that in a couple of weeks, just like the lettuce and celery, there should be growth from the center. But when I started looking at the life cycle of a pineapple, said it will take about a year for it to mature. And then depending on um, how you propagate it, it could take one and a half to two and a half years for it to flower. And then six months after that, it will produce a fruit. So uh, I, won't, I won't bore you with the details. I won't come back in three years. But I will come back in a couple of weeks and show you if I have a new growth. But um, We'll see whether or not I can survive three years and see if I can get a pineapple out of it. Anyway, it's a fun experiment. It's uh, definitely home science and things that you can do with food scraps. So I hope you got some cool ideas, and I encourage you to try something at home. And I thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next week on Tuesday Trash Talks at 10. Thanks.